uh, when 40 people, so here's your sample size, use the Weight Watchers diet for one year, they're mean, right? referring to these 40 people, which are part of a sample. And so this mean, they don't actually say it there. So you have to infer it. The sample mean is equal to 5.3. And the standard deviation, also you have to infer that we're talking about this sample of 40 people. Certainly there are more than 40 people who are on the Weight Watchers diet. So that is SX is equal to 3.8. Uh, they give us the level of significance here. So step two, 0 0.10. And so I'm just gonna write number two, which is identify the level of significance. So there it is. To test the claim that the mean, all right, so now, Whenever a claim is made, it's made about the population mean. So the population mean is mu. So mu, the population mean, uh, is greater than 4.3. This particular one, and what's confusing about these problems is that, you know, you see the word mean, the mean weight loss, the mean weight loss, there it is. There's no word in front that says it's the sample mean or the sample standard deviation. You have to infer that information knowing that they're giving you the results from a sample. They always give you the results of the sample. They, uh, in these hypothesis tests, they'll never give you the mean and standard deviation and sample size of the population. That's what we're trying to make a claim about. If we knew what the population mean was, we wouldn't have to do a hypothesis test to show evidence for it or against it. Again, as, as I'm talking here, if you have any questions, just put them into the, uh, the chat and I'll try to monitor that. Okay, and then, uh, so after this, then comes, you know, just write the five steps. So let's get through it. Here is the, uh, the claim. It's got a greater than sign. So it has to go in the alternative. The same variable, the same number goes in the null hypothesis and the equal sign always goes there as well. I'll also ask you to define the variable in your hypothesis. This is a variable, it's a, <clears throat> but we also call it a population parameter. You're using this letter, this variable in your null hypothesis and in, in your alternate hypothesis. So you should define it in words what it is, the mean weight loss using the Weight Watcher diet for one year. So if you su substitute this verbiage in for mu, it would be the mean weight loss using the Weight Watchers diet for one year is greater than 4.3. And word for word, that's pretty much what the claim is up here. And that is step one. Step two, over here. Step three, um, we're going to use the t-test because this is about means. If you want, just kind of t-test for means. There's no such thing as a t-test for proportions. Whenever you use a t-test, it must deal with means. All right, the Test statistic is T0, and the p-value is the p from the output. We're gonna be using the t-distribution and the degrees of freedom, which is always defined in these problems as the sample size, minus one. So the degrees of freedom is 39, if you need to know that information. All right, so to get this, We're going to use the t-test and we're going to select the stats option and then enter in all these numbers that we know. So for the input, we're going to use the summary statistics. They're going to ask you for mu zero. So this number over here, P0. 
appears in both places is mu zero. And then they ask for the summary statistics. And those are all up here. And I just got to get them in the right spot. 5.3, 3.8, and 40. And then the last one asks us about the alternative hypothesis. Now the, P, the mu zero value is 4.3. So we're, we have greater than 4.3, which is greater than the mu zero value. So the one you want to select down here is the one with greater than. Okay, and then calculate. So here's how it looks on the calculator. There's t-test right up toward the top. 4.3, and then 5.3, and then 3.8, and then 40, and then we have the greater than, and then calculate. So it tells us what our alternative hypothesis is there. Mu is greater than 4.3, compare that to this over here. It gives us the test statistic. It doesn't put T sub zero there, but you just need to know that that is the test statistic. The first thing that's always reported in these calculator functions, test statistic p-value. And then it reports back the mean standard deviation in N. You know these because you entered them in, but had you entered in raw data into L1, you wouldn't know these numbers. And so it always reports them. All right, I'm gonna round this to three decimal places. So there and the p-value 0 0.052. That's step three. That's where all the work is done. We're using, we usually use a calculator function for that step. Um, step number four is the decision. So what I usually do is just line up p and, and alpha. Uh, the p-value is what we just calculated to be 0.052. And the alpha value is up here at 0 0.10. And 0 0.10 is about double this one. So this number here, 0 0.052, is less than 0 0.10. So I'm going to put a less than sign between these two numbers. But this is the p, and this is the alpha. Therefore, p is less than alpha. And if p is less than alpha, there's only one decision that we can make. And here it is. If p is less than alpha, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So reject the null hypothesis. And then step five is the conclusion. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So I'm going to put an X through that. And so that means that there's, um, if we're going to say that there's evidence for one of these two competing hypotheses to be true, we would say that it would be the, sec, uh, the alternative hypothesis, which is a claim, which means that in the process of doing this hypothesis test, we are showing evidence to support the claim, evidence to support the alternative hypothesis in this case. So that's what we're going to write. All right, so there is enough evidence. Sufficient evidence is another way to say that to support the claim. All right, so this is kind of the generic language. And then the next thing after this would be to just describe the claim. In this case, it's in the alternative hypothesis. Just describe it in words. So, mean. They claim that the mean weight loss using the Weight Watcher diet for one year, okay, that's all of this, that's this one, is greater than four point three pounds. So those are the five steps. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now <clears throat> uh, with these next problems, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna go back and do this problem again, but we're gonna make one little change. 
And based on that one change, what does that change about the five steps is the question. So problem number two, we're gonna repeat this test above with a different level of significance. Now up here at the top, we use this level of significance to be 0.10. That was really an arbitrary choice. You know, why is it that someone would select alpha equals 0 0.10 versus alpha equals 0 0.05? Well, down here, they wanna be more confident that they're not gonna make an error. So for example, if you're gonna be accuse someone of cheating, like underfilling root beer bottles, then you probably want a little bit more, you know, confidence that you're not gonna make an error when you come back and say, hey, there's evidence that you're cheating. So at that point, you'd probably set a lower um, significance level, like 0.01 or something. But in this example, we're going from 0.10 to 0.05. What changes? Well, you know, nothing changes here. The claim has not changed. When we calculate the, um, you know, no, nowhere in this test, uh, calculations here, the test statistic and p-value calculations, do you see the value of alpha? And that's the only thing that we're changing. So nothing changes here. What changes comes down to step four. So now when we compare p to alpha, the p-value is still the same. It hasn't changed. But if we set this new alpha to be 0.05 rather than point one zero, then now the p-value is slightly larger than the alpha value. So the sign that goes between these two numbers is greater than, so p is greater than alpha, and if p is greater than alpha, then that changes our decision, because if p is greater than alpha, then we do not reject. So just by changing the level of significance, which you would never do in a problem. I just wanted to point this out. You would never do. You'd start with an alpha and you'd go with it, make your decision and, and go on. In this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis. It's, the com it's a completely different decision and it's all based on an arbitrary value of alpha. And so when, when you make this conclusion over here, please know that this conclusion is based on a single sample among millions and billions of possible samples. So you have to be very humble and just say, you know, yeah, there's evidence to support this claim, but hey, it might be an unrepresentative sample, in which case, um, because that happens 10% of the time or 5% of the time. And, you know, we don't want to base, say something like, you know, there's enough evidence to prove that the program loses weight because our results are based on one one sample. Not only are they based on one sample, as you can see here, they're based on an arbitrary choice of, of alpha. So be very, very humble, very, very um, vague in what you say over here. And the best thing to do is just to say there's evidence for this or there's evidence against this, this or that. Okay, conclusion changes as well. The conclusion changes because um, now we're not supporting the null hypothesis. So we would say there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the mean weight loss using the Weight Watchers diet for one year is greater than 4.3. So the only change that would happen is we would insert the word not in here. Everything else would be exactly the same. Okay, let's go back to problem number one and let's change one other thing. And what I'm gonna change in this one is the claim. It's a different claim. Their mean weight loss was 5.3. Uh, no, that was the, to test the claim that the mean weight loss is 4.3. So the new claim does not say that the mean weight loss is greater than 4.3, it says it is 4.3. Well, that's a different claim. And so therefore it's going to change the hypotheses. Mean is equal to 4.3. And since in this claim, there's no mention of the, if it's not 4.3, 
pounds weight loss if it would be greater than 4.3 or less than 4.3. So we're going to use the not equal to here. And also the, the word claim switches from the alternative hypothesis to the no. Well, just because of that one change, we're going to have a change in, in uh, the conclusion. So the only other change, notice that if we use this, the mu zero value doesn't change. The summary statistics do not change. All of this would be the same. What's going to change is this one down here. For this one down here, for the t-test, we're going to use the mu is not equal to mu zero. All right, now, if you haven't recognized this in the past, what's going to change is not the test statistic. It's going to be the same, right? Because the test statistic uses the same, um, the same four numbers here. Mu zero didn't change. It's still 4.3. The summary statistics from the sample are still the same. So the test statistic is going to be the same. The difference is going to be the p-value. The p-value will double. The relationship between a single-tailed test, left or right, and the, the um, two-tailed test is that the two-tailed test is double what the one-tailed test is. So I can, without actually calculating it, if the p-value up here was 0 0.0, Five, two, then the p-value down here would be double that, so 0 0.104. And um, also, if you compare P and alpha. Now alpha is 0 0.10 and P is 0 0.104 and you get greater than. So uh, for this one, we're not going to reject as well. So in two-tailed tests, p-values are generally larger. Okay, and the last thing here is sometimes to make the decision without using the p-value, we wanna use this, this sampling distribution. So I'm gonna go back up to uh, the first one, it says return to number one. So I'm gonna use this information here. What is assumed to be true about the, the um, null hypothesis is that the mean of the whole distribution of everyone who lost weight is 4.3. So 4.3 would go in the middle. <laughs> but usually what we do instead is we're going to use the T distribution, which is the standardized T distribution with degrees of freedom equals n minus 1. Right. So in this case, the degrees of freedom would be 39. So I'm going to look at the T distribution as opposed to the distribution that models this situation where the middle would be 4.3. All right, this is a, because of the greater than 4.3, greater than corresponds to a right tailed test. So we're going to put all of the alpha in the right tail. So this area here, this shaded region, this critical region they call it, this is the alpha, 0 0.10. And this is what the critical value is right here. There are two different numbers that you're going to plot on this horizontal scale, two numbers. The first one is the critical value. We're going to get that right here. It's going to be inverse. It's a T distribution. We have to give the left area, well, the right area is alpha, which is 0 0.10. So the left area is 0 0.90. And then we have to give the degrees of freedom, which is 39. The other place you can, you can get this critical value is in the T table. But it might not have a row for 39. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and type that in, get that critical value. 
Remember that um, those inverse T, inverse norm, those are all in the distribution menu. So second, distribution, and then down here, inverse T, number four. We're gonna put in the left area and then the degrees of freedom, and here is. Now, if I screwed up, it's not really a screwed up, and I just put alpha here, there's no big deal. You see the, the, the relationship between these two? You know, if I just put, if I put the right area instead of the left area, it's gonna give me the negative critical value. Now we know it can't be negative, it has to be the positive one. Because here's zero, and the critical value is to the right of zero. So this one has to be the 1.3, I'm just gonna call it 304, round it to three decimal places. Okay, so any test statistic that we find out in this region, anything to the left or the right of the critical value, anything in here, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. And anything that falls to the left in this case, we're not gonna reject. We're gonna to fail to reject. Over there. All right, let me go read all these things. Identify the sampling distribution. There it is, the T distribution with 39 degrees of freedom. Sketch and shade on the graph the sampling distribution. I've shaded it. Shade alpha, there it is. Identify the reject region and the do not reject region. There it is, those two regions on the graph. Now plot the critical value. Did that here on the graph. All right. And then this last step is to shade um, the p-value with a different color shading. Now the p-value is also an area like alpha, but this corresponds to, to the test statistic. So I'm gonna get out my other marker here. We know what the test statistic is. We've already calculated it. I'm gonna come back up here to point it out. Here's the test statistic, 1.664. Our line in the sand was 1.304. The test statistic of 1.664 falls right here. The p-value corresponds to that test statistic. So the p-value is the probability, assuming the null hypothesis is true, of getting our test statistic or something more extreme. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade what would count as more extreme, further away from the middle. So this red area is the p-value. And we know what this is because it calculated the p-value up here. 0.05. And since our test statistic fell in the reject region, our decision is to reject the null hypothesis. And that should be consistent with the decision that we made up here using the p-value approach. Now, if you compare the red region, P, to the black region, alpha, the red region here is a tinier region, a tinier, tinier area than the black region. So the P region is smaller in value than the alpha region. And if P is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So I'm doing a a geometric argument here for P less than alpha to reject the null hypothesis. Whatever decision you make in a problem, it has to be the same whether you, whether you use the p-value approach or what we call here the classical approach. And then there's the confidence interval approach as well that we could use.